Find functional hilarity at the Biffa Emporium. Girl, it's what I heard. Allegedly. It's just the word. Allegedly. It's on the street. Allegedly. I sing to the beat. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. So we start the interview with me, J Envy. Oh, God. He gonna call it Real Housewives of Potamic. It's Potomac. Po, 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 Potomac. Child now, Rob Dixon has one of her little caps on. You can tell that head ain't done. While Gabrice and Gabrissi at least came in with a decent wig and a decent beat. It looks like she finally got herself a new wig. Finally. This isn't that coochie hair wig her assistant was talking about. They start talking about their new podcast, Reasonably Shader. Oh God, so Gabrissi's gonna give us the backstory. You needed some extra money to finish your house, so you found a podcast network that would look at you and take pity on your sorry selves. So she's excited they're about to drop season six. Who can believe it? I can believe it. You're messy enough to stay around for six seasons. Gabrissi gonna say Envy was throwing shade calling us broke. Y'all were. Rob said, well, I was the official broke one and I'm not broke no more. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Broke is temporary, but you're impoverished, and that's forever. Because of your poor financial skills, and even worse, financial choices. Yeah, you just got out of another $90,000 of tax debt. Don't worry, honey, you gonna be broke again real soon. You love to piss money away. And I don't even know what you're spending it on, because it sure ain't your hair, your nails, your makeup, or your clothes, or your home. And Rob's gonna say, you're not the typical housewives people were used to. Y'all were two income households. Y'all both had to work. You weren't housewives. You were just wives that worked. Normally when you think of housewives, you think of glamorous. And you sure don't think of glamour when you think of Potomac. Monique was the only one with a bit of glamour. I'll give Karen a little bit of glamour too, but them first couple seasons with them wigs. Yeah, it wasn't no glamour. When Sharissi was there sitting up looking like the caterpillar saying, oh, ah, uh, uh, wasn't no glamour. When she was in them three size two small dresses, wasn't no glamour. That was them old party dresses from 10 years ago, honey. You can pick up a pound or two and ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with a full hip and a round buttock, but you gotta put it in a dress that fits. I ain't size shaming. Buy the size that fits. If you don't buy the size that fit, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Pepperidge Farm remembers, and you need to quit them dresses. Acquit those dresses. So they did a couple Instagram Live, and people liked it, so they decided to start a podcast. Oh, so on the show, Rob is the reasonable one, and Gabrice and Gabrissi bring the shade. Well, I mean, I'm sure they're not telling the truth about their own lives, so yeah, she can bring the shade. Angela Yee actually had a point. It's nice that y'all are still best friends because these shows can tear friendships apart. Really, because every friend Toya had that she brought on the show can't stand her. Heffaly, Contessa, and Anila. So Rob and Gabrissi tell each other about themselves off camera and behind the scenes. I think that's a good way to run it. If you're going to be on camera together, you got to be like, look, whatever happens, we're going to keep it behind the scenes. So DJ Envy says, well, what do you think about Portia's engagement to her castmate's ex-husband? Rob Dixon? So she wishes that Portia just would have waited a little bit longer to announce it. That's the only long one you get, and otherwise I'll pass out by the time I finish this video. <laughs> the brain needs oxygen. Oh, so Gabrice ain't gonna be shady, cause she like, look, I gotta work with Portia on chat room, and I'm not trying to get fired. Cause right now, I would say Portia is one of the first ladies of Bravo. Oh Lord, even Gabrice's father asked her what was going on with Portia. Please, your daddy be in the no more than you. Ooh, Gabrice gonna say, it's hard to find love or lust in these streets, so whatever she found, I'm happy for. Honey, I, that's gotta be love. I look at that, I don't see lust. 
I don't see lust. That's you with him. You gotta love and love hard. And everybody needs love. I, I hope it works. Probably won't. I'm gonna hope that it works. So now uh, Angela asked Gabrissi about unfollowing Wendy, and she said, "I just don't think Wendy's that interesting, so I don't need to follow her Instagram." I'm a second that. I'm a second that. So Giselle says, well, Wendy had some misunderstandings and thought she did some things that I didn't do. And she thought it was me because I do shady things, but I didn't do anything shady to her. Girl, boom. We know you set it up behind the scenes, you Lisa Vanderpump wannabe. I wasn't coming at her from a shady perspective. It was really out of concern. You don't know the heifer and you don't find her interesting, but it's out of concern. Y'all have us love to use concern as a way to get in somebody else's business that ain't your own. Now you got a whole bunch of filth around your front door and an of course not, but you worried about Wendy's merge. Rob and Juan are still engaged. They waiting for Bravo to pay for that wedding. Otherwise it's gonna be a solo cup affair with a Costco cake. She said we didn't get married this season because of the panic. Ooh, I know he was happy for that excuse. So Rob's explained her and Juan's long suffering relationship and how, you know, they really are family, even besides the relationship and the kids, cause you know, they grew up together and her parents is kind of his parents now. But yeah, get to the truth, Rob. It was cheaper to keep him. Y'all were too broke to move out and live independently. So you had to split the rent. Giselle gonna say, and then he put a ring on it, said, I want to keep my boo, unlike you. Is Jamal coming? Of course not. Is your ring coming? Of course not. Was your marriage in vain? Boom, boom, boom. Rob talking about how she had to support Juan because you know, he had just left his career in the NBA. You also had to support him because you blew all the money. Let's not forget about your bad investment with your friend into that Fonzie scheme. Oh, and now we get to Giselle and her relationship. Of course not. So Gabrissi is single and enjoying her hot girl summer. Where's the hot girl? Is it Rob? Rob. Now Gabrissi talking about how her pappy will stand beside her even when she's making decisions like Jamal Bryant. I don't know if that's love or enablement because I'd have cut you off. Ooh, Angela threw a little slick shade. You got your house together and it's a very just for you affair. Mm-hmm, with them ugly ass magenta walls, don't nobody want to be up in there. Oh, and now we're getting into Bussygate. Bussy in the morning, bussy in the evening, bussy at supper time. If you're grabbing bussy, you might end up doing time. Because he said, don't grab my bussy, don't grab my bussy, I'm your cameraman, I don't want to be anything more to you. Don't grab, don't grab my bussy, don't grab my bussy, you look like Yoda mixed with the gum. Don't grab, I'm just beside myself. When I feel your creepy hand across my buttocks, I am repulsed and I want to throw up when you try to touch my buttocks. Don't grab my pussy, don't grab my pussy. Gave y'all a little extra verse. We might have to turn that into a full song and hopefully a full hit. So they get to talk about how they used to see Michael Darby grabbing and getting the meat. So NJ Envy asked, what did Ashley say? And they said, she said he's Australian, so he's different. And Angela gonna say he's down under. That, that was almost funny, Angela. Almost, look at you. Trying to become interesting when no one was paying attention to you. So Rob has a booming hat business, yet she was still depressed. Well, it was the panty we were all going through. It was four years of the idiot. It was the panty, it was the injustice. It was a lot for everybody. Rob said, you know, I was always looking a hot mess after I cut my hair short. It looks like shit long too, honey. I don't know why you had that CVS receipt printed on that wig last reunion when you were so glad Juan Dixon wasn't there. Is it because you're used to him not showing up for you? But I digress. Because her head was always looking the fool, she just needed some cheap hats. I mean, some cute hats to be presentable. So Angela asks, how are you and Karen doing? And she says, today we're good. And Nijay says, who's Karen? And of course they say, she's the eldest. 
That's why y'all ain't doing good. You could have said she was the blonde. Well, you're all blonde. You could have said she's the one with taste, the one with style, the one married to the black Bill Gates. Rob sounds like a real tomboy. She used to be a juvenile delinquent who poured soda cans into mailboxes. <laughs> if that ain't a little boy. So Gabrissi was very honest and she said, oh no, I came into this with a plan to get some businesses going. And I was always telling Rob the same thing and now she's got a booming hat line and everything I've tried my hand at, I failed miserably, which is why we have this podcast. Oh goodness, Rob is building a house. I guess them hats is really selling. Cause we know Bravo's giving you a little check. Angela came to play. So she asked about the new girl and Giselle said, you know, she's a great addition, started off Rocky and she's actually rich. And Angela gone ask, is, isn't Karen rich? Come on now, come on now. Giselle said, no, <laughs> that's not a read. That's just a fact. So of course we bring up last season and Giselle's going to say, I don't think there's a reason for us black women to be physically fighting. You were the one who pushed Monique. You egged that fight on. So Rob says, well, if people hadn't lied and run to social media and put out false stories and had people bullied on social media, you're all gonna be bullied on social media when you go on a reality show. And it's all about who's going to put out the story first. Candace loves to get up in people's faces and then play victim when she gets slapped. She throws a rock and hides her hand. So Giselle's playing politics. I want what's best for the show. I didn't want her gone. I just want what's best for the show. Whatever that means, you wanted that heifer gone. Her and her four homes. You barely have one. You've got a shack, a barn, as Chris said, a barn. Rob gone say for the wedding, you'll have to wait till season seven. Honey, they was getting rid of you on season six if Momo hadn't left. But that was the interview. I'll see y'all soon for something. Alleged what? Alleged who? Allegedly, Lee, Lee. Allegedly. Don't blame. Don't sue. Allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly.